Hello everybody and welcome back to Robert's Reviews. Today we are going to be continuing the series where I watch every Robin Williams movie in order so that you don't have to. And believe me, you're going to want to thank me by the end of this movie, this film, this, this video that I'm making about this film that, quite frankly, was really bad. <laughs> so without further ado, let's talk about Seize the Day. Seize the Day was released in 1987. It was written by Ronald Ribman and directed by Fielder Cook. Now, this movie is a direct-to-TV movie. Now, if you guys don't know what that means, it is it means that they are made, they filmed it, and they created it that is only going to be released on TV. Um, that doesn't mean that made-for-TV movies can't be sold on DVD or Blu-ray. I honestly don't think you could find this one for Blu-ray or DVD. I really don't. Um, I... Personally, could not find it on any streaming services, but I did find a copy of it on YouTube. And let me tell you, it's actually not the worst quality. Uh, I mean, it's not good quality because it was made in 1987 to starters. But, like, 1987, in terms of putting it onto YouTube, would normally be pretty bad. And honestly, it was pretty good quality, all things considered. Um, it is in the asset ratio of a TV, so it's a square. Uh, I actually think it's a little bit a little bit, little bit, bit wider than a square, but definitely not a rectangle by any means. Um, so that is interesting. And I actually do want to talk about the acid ratio just real quick. I do think acid ratios matter a lot in film, particularly in this case where everything on screen really matters, right? You only have this much space to, like, decide what goes there, right? Like here, I can put, like, almost my entire arms out, and, like, you can see it in the video, almost all of it, up to my, like, forearms. And if I had this much room, I would have to talk to you guys like this, but now I can be like this and show you how big this is. And I think that really does matter in terms of filmmaking, and I think this movie did... One one little credit, one little credit. I think the asset ratio was good here. I don't think this would have been... Well, first of all, this would have been really bad at the box office. But I think that this movie worked really well in terms of it being able to be on a tiny screen. So I think the decision to make that on a small screen was good. I don't know whose decision that was, but good job. Uh, in terms of why the rest of the film is bad, um, it's, it's awful. I don't even know where to start. Let's start with the writing. The writing is incredibly lazy. It feels like... Alright, I don't, I don't even tell you what the movie's about. Seize the Day is about a man who loses his job and so he goes to New York City to look for another one. He tries to get help from his dad and other people that he knows and they all kind of turn him down. And then he goes to this other man who teaches him about the market, the stock market, where he loses all of his money. And at the end of the film, he just cries. And that's the entire film. I swear to you, that's the entire film. There's nothing else. There's no happy ending. There isn't really an, a sad ending. It just ends. He's like, oh, and I'm sad. And that's the end of the movie. And, like, spoilers, I'm sorry. But, like, it's a waste of an hour and a half. Like, a complete waste of an hour and a half. I beg you not to watch this film if you can help it. It is an incredible waste of time. Like, wow. <sighs> The worst part is, is, like, I'm kind of entranced by it because, like, I watched the whole thing straight through. And I was really impressed that I did that. But at the same time, what a waste of time. I could have been, been doing anything else. And I think a lot of that has to do with the directing here, right? Where the directing was interesting. I like the aspect ratio a lot. But for the most part, it just kind of followed Williams around. And that's fine, but, like, Williams was... We're going to get there. We're going to get there and say it. We're on the directing. Uh, not very good. Not very interesting. Not enough. Not enough powerful imagery here to keep me entertained the whole time. I would say like, is this almost over yet? And it like never was. And like, I think that a lot of the issues have to do with the fact that the sequencing of this film is bad, right? We go from Rod Williams is trying to get a job to Rod Williams is trying to get a job to Rod Williams is trying to get a job to Rod Williams loses all his money in the stock market to Rod Williams is crying. That's like the entire film. I literally. I'm not even, like, skipping any parts. That's, like, the entire film. And it is remarkably bad. That's so bad. And again, there are good things. I like the acid ratio choice. I like some of the acting, and I'm going to get into that right now. Starting with Robin Williams as Tommy Wilhelm. Robin Williams is not good in this film. He is just really not good. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that the writing didn't give him anything. I don't know why he chose to do this film by like, at all. Like, maybe he was desperate for money at this point. But, like, wow. Mmm. Rob Williams should not have been in this movie. This is two in a row? Yeah, it must be two in a row. 
of just like really bad Robin Williams movies. Let me double check that. My calendar's on the floor. Like, I just, I think that, uh, yeah, two and a half really bad Robin Williams movies in a row where I honestly don't think Robin Williams does that well. I think that he has two bad performances in a row. Club Paradise was very bad for Robin Williams, and this movie did nothing better. They both were bad movies with, in my opinion, bad acting by Robin Williams. I honestly... This this whole getting through every Robin Williams movie is getting tough. I'm going to do it, of course, because I'm not a quitter, and I know he gets better. Like, next week, we're doing Dead Poet Society. Who goes from this movie to Dead Poet Society? I'll never know. But, like, it... It's impressively bad. It really is. Jerry Stiller as Dr. Tamkin. I actually don't hate him in this. I think that he is a very fun character. He, he's the stockbroker guy who's like teaches Robin Williams how to lose all his money. Uh, and I think his character is really funny at very least. At very least, he does provide some very good comic relief. And that's something that you need in a movie like this where it's just so dry and boring. I am impressed with how much this character could carry. This character did carry a lot of this film, and I, I do think that it was a wise choice to choose Jerry here. I think that he was a very, very, very strong actor, um, and I really enjoyed him in this film. I will watch more of his in the future, I'm sure, um, even if by accident, but we'll see. Overall, a massive, 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 massive waste of time. I do not recommend anybody watch this film, although if you are interested, it is on YouTube. There is a YouTube video, and it is a Spanish title. If you type Seize the Day Full Movie, it'll pop up, and it's it's Spanish, but when you watch it, it's not Spanish. So if you're interested, you can find it there. But I'm going to give Seize the Day a D-. minus. Not the worst movie I've ever seen, but pretty freaking close. Definitely the worst drama release movie so far. But thank you guys so much for watching this uh, video. Uh, please consider subscribing if you guys want to follow along. I have a different series every single week. This week, of course, on, on Tuesdays, we have Robin Williams. So we have Dead Poets Society. Oh, I was wrong. We have Good Morning Vietnam next week. That's even better. Then we have Dead Poets Society. And then Cadillac Man. And then Awakenings Dead Again. The Fisher King. Oh, wait. That's not true. Awakenings. No, that's right. Yeah, Awakenings, Dead Again, The Fisher King, Hook, Fern Gully, Aladdin, all that fun stuff. So if you guys want to follow along, uh, consider subscribing and liking the video and sharing with your friends. Because I'm going to keep going until I finish every single one. And it'll be exhausting. But thank you guys so much for watching the video. And as always, keep watching movies and television, stay educated, and I'll see you guys in the next video.